Delayed by many years and now finally here, Falcon? No, not that one solo, SpaceX Falcon Heavy, now on KNews. Hi Lucas here, welcome to this KNews special and as always a big shout out to you my KNews boosters on Patreon, thanks for your trust. I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but it's really hard to believe that the day has finally come and we will see this particular bird of prey fly for the first time. It will take off of the only operational launch site that supports it in Cape Canaveral. So yes, if it explodes on the launch pad, that means SpaceX won't attempt it anytime soon again. Whatever you wish for, make sure not exploding over the launch pad is on the very top of the list. Elon Musk himself said in an interview that he considers it a win even if they can only avoid just that. But why? Falcon Heavy is hyped up a lot and at least SpaceX tries to keep the expectations low. This is a test and there are many things that could go wrong because they are simply unknown. But that's actually a good thing because test flights like this exist to uncover flaws so they don't happen on crewed missions in the future. I'm pretty sure they will not be very gentle with Falcon Heavy on this particular flight. Speaking of it, the launch date is February 6, 2018 at 18.30 UTC from Cape Canaveral. There is a 3 hour long launch window, so in case you are planning to watch it live, make sure to bring plenty of time and some snacks. The backup day is the day after, should they run into trouble, but so far at least the weather looks go. On board will be, well, a cherry red Tesla Roadster, what else? One of the first cars Tesla produced. Now it of course looks silly to launch a car to space and it maybe really is, but test flights generally involve undisclosed dummy payloads, which could have been even much more silly in the past without anyone knowing it. Unlike government agencies who don't rely on marketing, SpaceX or Tesla for that matter does. It is not a bad idea to launch something that would hit all the front pages, showing it off. But I think the most important reason here for SpaceX is to simply reach more people and get them interested in the space. The Roadster's destination is a Mars orbit, which should not be confused with an orbit around Mars. The Mars orbit is the trajectory the planet follows around the Sun, so the Roadster will become a neighbor of Mars. It is yet unknown how close the vehicle will get, but I personally don't expect any imagery with a big Mars in the background, unless they have a telescope on board. Falcon Heavy, like its smaller brother Falcon 9, uses two core stages and as an addition two more first stage boosters as strap-ons. If you are familiar with rocketry, this will immediately remind you of the United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy and they are indeed very similar when it comes to size. However, Delta IV uses cryogenic hydrogen as fuel, which is far less dense as Falcon 9's kerosene. As a comparison, liquid hydrogen has a density of around about 70 kg per cubic meter, which is 14 times lower than water, weighing 1000 kg per cubic meter. These cubes here have the same mass essentially. Now, kerosene is very similar to water when it comes to the mass per volume, so you can imagine that a hydrogen rocket is much bigger for its weight than a kerosene one. The thing missing here is the liquid oxygen, which mixes it all up again, but that's only a ballpark and not the exact relation between the two. It's just important to understand why a Delta IV Heavy weighs in at 730,000 kilograms, while Falcon Heavy, although a bit more compact, has a mass of 1.42 million kilograms. Or in other words, 1.42 gigagrams. That's almost twice as heavy as the currently biggest rocket out there and it therefore also needs twice the thrust to get off the ground. And that again means more noise and more boom should something go wrong. The first dangerous part of the launch is the takeoff itself. Each of the rocket's 27 Merlin engines pushes its exhaust out of the nozzle at speeds above the speed of sound. This means the exhaust gas generates a lot of strong pressure waves in the air which hit the ground and sadly also bounce back towards the vehicle. Now I'm sure SpaceX has done a lot of simulations, but you can never be 100% sure. These off the ground bouncing sonic booms could make the long rocket body oscillate and oscillation means energy can build up. This energy could then make the rocket's tanks experience more pressure than they are designed to and fail, so the rocket has to get off the pad as quickly as possible. If Falcon Heavy has successfully survived that part, the next event to keep an eye on is the rotation it does. I'm not sure if and how they will rotate the rocket on its maiden flight, but even KSP models that one pretty well. The side boosters have a lot of mass and rotating them around the core causes a lot of shearing forces at the coupling between all three bodies. This could again induce some kind of oscillation from wobbling around, destroying the coupling and ultimately the vehicle. 
This is unknown territory for SpaceX and it all depends on how well their simulation tools predict the real behavior. I could imagine they also did some real life tests by twisting and bending these in all possible directions. And this is of course not the last challenge because soon after Falcon Heavy will go through its maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. This is where the speed combined with the ambient air pressure generate the highest forces on the rocket body, now pulling hard on both the side mounted boosters. This and the airflow around the rocket could again lead to some strange unknown oscillations, which would of course again lead to an explosion midair. However, at this point in flight at least the launch pad is safe, so I'm pretty sure we will hear a lot of cheers in the stream already. The last risky event is the strap on booster separation. While I'm sure SpaceX has tested their mechanism on ground, having endured all these stresses during launch, who knows if they will still work properly. Even separating of sync could lead to unknown destructive behavior, but the worst part would be of course if one or both wouldn't separate correctly. If something gets stuck while the booster tries to get loose, goodbye Falcon Heavy and goodbye Cherry Red Roadster. That is really a lot that can go wrong in the first couple of minutes, but if both boosters separate successfully and Falcon Heavy stays in one piece, this test launch was a full success already, no matter what happens after that. The rest is pretty much standard Falcon 9 procedure, be it the booster landings that follow or the upper stage release and burn towards Mars. Speaking of it, while the side boosters rotate and burn back towards the landing zone, the core will go on pushing forward. As the core stage then drains almost out of fuel, it will also separate and attempt landing on a drone ship far out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The upper stage will meanwhile continue to speed up its payload until it reaches escape velocity. The speed needed to leave Earth and put the vehicle into an orbit around the Sun may be intersecting Mars once at some point. The reason I think the Tesla won't fly by Mars directly is the launch window towards the Red Planet opens in a few months from now, around May and it's just too soon. In a nutshell, in order to get to Mars somewhat efficiently, you have to launch just before Earth overtakes Mars on its orbit around the Sun. This happens roughly every two years, so it is pretty much a coincidence that we are that close right now. If SpaceX really wanted to fly by Mars, they would probably wait a couple more months. But I don't know how fast the upper stage can speed up the payload. The Tesla seems incredibly light compared to regular satellites, so there is a very very small chance that SpaceX could take a less efficient route. Instead of such a transfer, which exactly intersects the Martian orbit at its apoapsis, the highest point of its orbit, they could accelerate faster and push the trajectory closer towards the Sun. This would mean the Roadster would take a quicker route reaching Mars orbit sooner. It would then of course be able to take a close up picture of the Red Planet, but it would still not be able to stay there. It would simply fly by and get flung away into space orbiting the Sun for millions of years without ever meeting Mars again. I personally doubt they would do that, even if they could, because flying by planets usually means you have to be able to do correction burns along the way to make really sure not to hit Mars by accident. A small deviation in the beginning has a huge impact on the overall trajectory. That would be way too complicated for such a test flight since you then also had to make sure everything is protected against micrometeorites, the sun's radiation, solar flares and so on. So I don't expect anything more but also not less than a few really cool pictures and maybe video of a Tesla Roadster drifting away from our pale blue dot. Good luck SpaceX and I really hope you guys are able to watch it live. Ok, that shall conclude this special episode and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.